Welcome to Greybeard's Jewels, a step into the unknown. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the melon heads of Ohio, Michigan, and Connecticut. In the American folklore of Ohio, Michigan, and Connecticut, melon heads are beings generally described as small humanoids with bulbous heads who occasionally emerge from hiding places to attack people. Different variations of the legend attribute different origins to the entities. Here's part of the legend for Ohio. The melon head stories of Ohio are primarily associated with the Cleveland suburb of Kirtland. According to local lore, the melon heads were originally orphans under the watch of a mysterious figure known as Dr. Crow, or known as Dr. Melonhead. Crow is said to have performed unusual experiments on the children who developed large hairless heads and malformed bodies. Some accounts claim that the children were already suffering from hydrocephalus and that Crow injected even more fluid into their brains. Eventually, the legend continues, the children killed Crow, burned the orphanage, and retreated to the surrounding forest and supposedly fed on babies. Legend holds that the melon heads may be sighted along Wisner Road in Kirkland and Chardon Township. The melon head legend has been popularized on the internet, particularly on the websites Creepy Cleveland and Dead Ohio, where users offer their own versions of the story. A movie, Legend of the Melon Heads, released in 2010, is based on the Ohio legend and various other legends in the Kirkland area. Legend in Michigan The melon heads of Michigan are said to reside around Felt Mansion, although they have also been reportedly seen in southern forested areas of Ottawa County. According to one story, they were originally children with hydrocephalus who lived at the Junction Insane Asylum near Felt Mansion. The story explains that after enduring physical and emotional abuse, they became feral and were released into the forest surrounding the asylum. The Allegan County Historical Society asserts that the asylum never existed, although it was at one point a prison. However, the story has been part of a local folklore for several decades. Lake Town Township manager Al Miskin told the Holland Sentinel that he had heard the tales as a teenager, noting that his friends referred to the beings as wobbleheads. Some versions of the legend say that the children once lived in the mansion itself, but later retreated to a system of caverns or caves in a nearby hill left over from an abandoned zoo. Some versions of this legend say that the children devised a plan to escape and kill the doctor that abused them. It is said that the children had no place to hide the body, so they cut it up in small pieces, which they hid around the mansion. Rumors exist that the teenagers who had broken into the mansion saw ghosts of the children and claimed to see shadows of the doctor's murder through the light coming in from an open door. The legend has spread throughout the region, even becoming the subject of a 2011 film simply titled The Melon Heads, which is based around the West Michigan legend. Legend in Connecticut Sawmill City Road is the dirt road where the Shelton Melonhead supposedly lurked. Several variations of Melonhead legend can be found throughout southwest Connecticut, especially in central and eastern Fairfield County and western New Haven County, Connecticut. In eastern Fairfield County, many tales can be found in communities such as Trumbull, Shelton, Stratford, Monroe, Easton, and Weston. In western and central New Haven counties, tales can be found in towns like Seymour, Oxford, Milford, and South Bay. There are several primary Connecticut variations. According to one variation of the myth, Fairfield County was the location of an asylum for the criminally insane that burned down in the fall of 1960, resulting in the death of all the staff and most of the patients with 10 to 20 inmates unaccounted for supposedly having survived and escaped to the woods. The legend states that the melon head's appearance is the result of them having resorted to cannibalism in order to survive the harsh winters of the region and to inbreeding, which in turn caused them to develop hydrocephalus. Some retellings of this version substitute the asylum or prison with a place of business or campgrounds 
and the inmates, patients, and employees, staff, or campgoers. Individual variations will modify what town these individuals were originally from and where they end up. According to the second variation, the Melonheads are descendants of a colonial era family from Shelton Trumbull who were banished after accusations of witchcraft were made against them, causing them to retreat into the woods. As with the first version of this legend, the variation attributes the appearance of the Melonheads to inbreeding. Melonheads allegedly prey upon humans who wander into their territory. Like the first version, Individual retellings will modify what town the family was originally from and where they end up. Dracula Drive A number of Connecticut-based legends of the Melonheads have one characteristic in common. The inclusion of a secluded, rustic, or single lane, usually a dirt road, running through the Melonheads wooded territory. Many towns in Fairfield County and New Haven County have rural and forested sections and it is not uncommon for these forests to have rural roads running through them. These roads at times are associated with the local variation of the Melonhead legend and are said to be part of the Melonhead's territory. In a number of towns such as Shelton, Trumbull, and Monroe, several legends place the Melonhead's territory around the mysterious and mythical street commonly referred to as Dracula Drive. None of the towns that have a Melonhead legend have roads designated as Dracula Drive. Depending on what version of the legend is told, one of several existing streets are mistakenly referred to or coincidentally coincide with Dracula Drive, mentioned in the Melonhead stories. For instance, some legends place the Melonhead's territory in and around Sawmill City Road in Shelton as Dracula Drive. Some other roads mistakenly referred to as Dracula Drive include Edmonds Road in Oxford, Velvet Street in Trumbull and Monroe runs between Tashu Road in Trumbull and Judd Road in Monroe near the eastern border, Zion Hill Road in Milford, the roads around Lake Mohegan in Fairfield, Marginal Road in New Haven, Jeremy Swamp Road in Southbury, Pass Roads in and around Roosevelt Forest in Stratford the rest of the story from Kirtland. Not long after World War II ended, the federal government hired a doctor to treat hydrocephalitic children at his remote orphanage type institute, Sumner Cottage, Kirkland, Ohio. Unfortunately, the physician hired wasn't the best choice. Dr. Crow was an evil man, abusing his patients and performing inhuman experiments on the suffering children. Children were kept in cages, and the insane physician would inject the children's water-laden brains with additional water, expose them to radiation, and use other methods to physically and mentally torture his patients. Many of the young victims of Dr. Crow's torture died and were buried close by in the King Memorial Cemetery. Some of Dr. Crow's victims did not die, but became feral and uncontrollable because of the abuse. Eventually, the children rebelled against their tormentor and attacked the doctor in his laboratory. The assault was extremely vicious. The doctor was literally torn apart and devoured. During the attack, a fire was started and the lab and surrounding buildings were destroyed. The wild children had nowhere to go but into the surrounding woods. There's another story that wicked Dr. Crow was married to a kindly woman who was loved by the children. One night, Dr. Crow and his wife were arguing and Mrs. Crow was killed, either intentionally or by accident, when she fell against the cabinet and hit her head. The children became enraged and blamed the doctor, viciously killing him and burning down the institute. Since that time, many decades ago, there have been numerous reports of short, naked creatures with oversized heads in the woods near Wiser Road in Kirkland, Ohio, attacking humans and animals. The locals call the creatures melon heads, and it is advised to wear dark clothing if traveling through the area at night. The wild children are said to have poor eyesight. Thanks for listening to Greybeard's Jewels, a step into the unknown.